and some other businesses even we've been asked by City of Riverton to bring a request to us this night to look at. And we are now going to receive information this, at this time. So we're going to take a look at um, REZ 2017-01, City of Riverton, Ms. Jessica. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as we talked about um, last week, we have a development for a mixed use um, at the old Rington Mill property. Um, what they had originally proposed was four buildings at um, three stories apiece. Um, in your practice today, I gave you an updated site plan that was presented, um, was given to staff Friday afternoon. Um, it includes three buildings, uh, two buildings being four story and one building being three. Um, the number of Six units, and four, two buildings have four stories, and one building has three stories. Okay. The two, the two buildings that are facing West Gordon are your four story sensor. Um, they went from 104 units to 88 units uh, based on their new um, site plan. And they were still showing that building A would have 14,500 square feet of commercial property. Uh, that's still being the only the only building that would have actual mixed use in it. Um, I know that the commission brought up last week about parking. Uh, the original uh, site plan that was presented, they were going to need 343 parking spaces, and they had a total space, space count of 301. Uh, the new site plan requires them to have 321 parking spaces, and they provided 286. Uh, one of the questions that was brought up at the last me uh, meeting was the uh, spaces for uh, commercial. That was one space for every 200 square feet, which um, came up with 72.5 spaces for the commercial area and 249 spaces for the apartments based on the new site plan that was presented. Uh, additional comments that were made from the commission were regarding the, um, the pool area with fire. Since they have taken out one of the buildings, that issue is no, that is no longer an issue for the fire department. Um, also attached to your packet is uh, the written response from Mr. Cohn in regards to the uh, conditions that I had discussed with the commission last week. Uh, staff's recommendation, we uh, fully support the mixed use rezoning request uh, with several, uh, with eight conditions, one being to increase community commercial area to include both buildings um, in A and B, first floor. Uh, we grant an easement to the city of Ramerton to allow access to the smokestack for a city park. <coughs> Increase the city right away to include the Old Street Park in the West Gordon. Increase the area size for recreational facilities for the tenants. The approval of a site plan upon a submission of the civil drawing that would include but not limited to stormwater structures, fire hydrants, dumpster locations, lighting, and landscaping shall meet the requirements of the Rivington Zoning Ordinance and Downtown Design Guidelines, and the complete rendering showing the more specific building elevation and color that include landscape and topography of the property, since the property is slow tremendously, and the commercial area to include all the retail and restaurants. Um, staff feels that this is a very vital piece of property in our community. It's the last property that we have, um, vacant property in our area that is commercial. Um, we want to continue to see commercial growth in our community as well. Uh, and we want a place where um, the residents have a place to live, work, and play at. And so we are fully in support of the redevelopment for mixed use. <coughs> Um, after discussing with the um, with the developer, Mr. Hingen, um and Mr. Cohen and, and Mr. Cohen's um, letter, there um, the only thing that we're not in complete agreement with is the additional commercial space. So it includes both buildings A and B. Do you know how many apartments would be on B? 
that that would eliminate if it was all commercial, or you could talk about commercial properties fronting uh, West Gordon? Commercial fronting West Gordon in the building A and B, and I believe there was 10, 10 apartments there on the first floor. You eliminate. And then they would be, and they would have, based on the building A rendering, they would have seven commercial units. So the, the interior, facing the interior of the, of the uh, property, those would still be apartments there? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Make sure the only commercial property is facing West Yes, it does. I've got a just out of curiosity question. Um, <laughs> You've got four-story buildings over there. Does Remington have a ladder truck or you got a mutual Yes, sir, response? we sure do. You do? Yes, sir. <laughs> I was just curious. <laughs> Do what? <laughs> yes, sir, we uh, obtained a fire truck about six, uh, ladder truck about six months ago. Okay. That'd be kind of important for a full story building, yeah. Yeah. That's good. Good. Jessica, uh, uh, I see your conditions as you have uh, treatment for us. And it's curious, it says there's a few things that the developer has wanted some relief in, and one of them is to reduce. Uh, I, I suppose it's still have to reduce parking places down to 301. You just told us that 321 required. That's the first thing. And that they want relief from the second commercial building. I mean, from building B, has relief not having to work with that. And as far as the setbacks. So, what, what is your opinion on those three things that the development put for relief? Um, on the relief of the third, based on the new drawing, it was 321 required parking spaces. And they were providing 286, which was a variance for 35 and a half parking spaces. So they short 35. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, as far as the variance for the setback, that does not have an um, issue with that at all. Um, it would be some negotiation on the building B as far as the retail space. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, the additional retail space is not a complete deal breaker for staff. However, if they were not going to put additional commercial space in building B, we would like for it to mimic and have the same look as building A since they are both there facing West Florida. So that building B would appear to be commercial um, storefront property on the first floor as well. And as far as the parking, um, if they could get a uh, conditional um, a letter from the adjacent property owner at Bremerton Square allowing them to use the additional parking, their additional parking, staff would be okay with that as well. Okay. Per, per your drawing that you've submitted to us, I've just, just to ask you, on the building A, that proposed building A, looks like the, the bottom floor is for your commercial space. Yes, sir. And it looks like it has a different uh, skin pattern to that. I can't tell exactly what it okay. is. But on, but on the building B, the same skin pattern, uh, pattern is present there also. Would, would, you, would that suffice enough for you to make it look A and B to look alike? Yes, sir. well for A and B to look like I would prefer, or a staff would prefer that the storefront windows be emblazed on the bottom of building A. If I could present this to the commission, please, the colors rendering. Really so they would be phone windows, is that what you're yes. suggesting? Well, then it'd still be live glass, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, but I mean, but, but there wouldn't be a regional space in there. It would look just like building A, but it would be fun. Yeah. Okay. Any questions for Jessica? Commissioners, any additional questions? <coughs> So, so just so we all know that on their relief, you're okay with giving them relief if they have a written statement from the property owner across the street that they can park there. Yes, sir. And you're also okay with giving them relief on the commercial of Building B if they give some type of facade that looks commercial. Yes, sir. And you're okay with giving them relief from 65 to 55 on their setbacks. Yes, sir. Anyone here or not wishing to speak in favor of this request, come forward at this time. My name is Joe Tillman, and 
I'm the managing partner for Remington Hill LLC, which owns this property. And um, we acquired the property in 2005 and developed plans in 2006. And then ultimately, we worked with the city, I worked with Jessica, all over all of these years from 2007 to uh, 2010, we were attempting through a re their redevelopment authority to actually maintain and preserve the mill and have it redeveloped as a mixed use property. Uh, that could never come to be. So in 2010 and 11, we actually worked with the city to see about possibly selling them two acres on the southern part of the tra track for them to relocate their city hall. And that did not work out. Ultimately, in 2012, latter part of that year, we went ahead and submitted a proposal um, to have the mill demolished, uh, the structure removed. Uh, we had to do a, um, a remediation. And then ultimately, we had to hire a company to come in and clean, haul off all of the debris, and then level the property. So all of that was finished by the December of 2014. Uh, we then talked to the city in 2014 one more time about the possibility of them acquiring two acres on the southern side, and they declined to do that, which is fine. That was up to them. Uh, we listed the property with the Herman Company in 2014 while we were completing the cleanup. In uh, November of 2016, the Bay Tree parcel went under contract and the proposed use of that property is an uh, interior um, storage facility. It's about 100,000 square feet. It's three stories high. Uh, they've reviewed the site plan and the architectural design of it and have approved all of that. Um, as a result of that going in there, obviously that's going to block the view of this parcel that we're speaking to. <coughs> So in, in November, excuse me, in October of 2017, we entered into a contract for this parcel. It was our understanding it would be multi-family uh, housing, and only later recently did we find out about the mixed use. The developer has agreed to uh, have the mixed use and to make the two parcels mirror each other, but with the view that's limited as far as the bakery side and also I think in the work session there was some discussion about existing parcels in Remerton. Uh, vacancies in Remerton today are at 1205 Bay Road, 1811 Plum Street, 1813 Plum Street, 1759 Garden Street, 1804 Plum Street, 1806 Plum Street, 1808 A and B Plum Street, 1810G Plum Street, 1825 Plum Street, 1809 Plum Street, 1305 Bakery Road, 1211 Bakery Road, and 1400 Melody Lane. Um, over the weekend, for it to be uh, to resemble the old mill site. 
uh, the contractor that's involved with the project actually built um, Jackson Square, the original facility. Very nice looking facility. Quite frankly, in my opinion, uh, the, one of the nicest facilities in Lindbergh, Georgia. Um, I think what they're proposing to do here will be a huge upgrade for the community. Um, if you ride through there, there's a lot of, uh, quite frankly, a lot of real estate that's in disrepair. But I think this will be um, good for the community. It will in in increase their property tax base quite a bit and provide something that they can be proud of. Um, Jackson Square sits on 3.79 acres and has 80 units, so it's a little over 20 units uh, per acre. And so I think the proposed use of the property uh, and the look of this property, when you're riding down Gordon Street um, going into Remerton, on the left-hand side, all of the um, real estate, with the exception of the square that sits there on Bay Tree, are just metal buildings that have been there a long, long time. I think this is going to be a huge upgrade for the community and hopefully will lead to some further redevelopment in the Remerton downtown area. So we're supportive of um, what's been filed. Uh, we do hope that um, they can see fit to accept the reduced square footage because we think the developer would be on a huge risk. Uh, Valosta, Georgia, uh, it's, a, it's a soft market. That's the only way I know to describe it. And uh, they're willing to go in and make a significant improvement in the, for the city of Remerton. And I think that if, if the parties could agree to follow that path, that would be the most logical path to go. Just to thank you very much. I know we've got one commissioner who has a question. Yes, and all of the properties that you listed at in, in Riverton uh, proper, were those commercial or residential? Those are commercial. Com okay. All commercial. All right. Any more questions for Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Collins, I see you sitting over here and got your little display at Brickham. Can you, can you come, can I ask you a question or two, sir? Yes. I, I know that, that uh, Jessica said that she would be willing to give relief on Building B. Yes, sir. And I know you, all your wisdom that could, that you could possibly make, right. satisfy both things here and have a solid to look like commercial that would be an apartment. Uh, on Building B? Yes, sir. If we try to make Building B look like Building A with a commercial, I, I, and, and, I, and you did a wonderful job. I, I mean, I love the different textures and everything. And I just, I mean, that's what she had said that she would, that she would have no problem with. Just somebody could put like some storefront glass or something. I don't know if it's possible. Sure, or not. I'm, just, I'm just, I'm just asking you. It would be, I mean, anything's possible. <laughs> but you're talking about a horrendous cost for faux windows I, to I, this extent. I understand that. I mean, we've done faux windows before, like where it might be a three foot. <clears throat> five foot window. Yes sir. And there it's just crazy expensive because it takes a mm -hmm. special kind of glass. It takes spandrel glass to do it. And when you start throwing in doors and I mean you're just gonna put a version on the glass <coughs> to make that building be at this storefront on there. Yes sir. Yes sir. So Mr. Chairman if I may ask um Mr. Cole, what would you do that would be less cost prohibitive that would satisfy satisfy staff's recommendation for um, for making building B look more similar to building A? What what would be some of your recommendations for doing so? Maybe if we could uh, not put the doors, you know, uh, and just put some bow windows, but not the continuous windows like this, mm -hmm. where it looks like a Shopping center, strip shopping center entrance, you know. Uh, I think you see on building B. Yeah. Where's the where's the door at on, on building B, Jimmy? I'm just curious. It's interior corridors. Oh. Yeah. And yeah, all these are interior corridors. Are there awnings on the front of building A? Mm -hmm. Would it be possible perhaps to just do awnings on building B over the apartment windows? Yeah, we could do something like that. Mm-hmm. Well, the staff think about that. If the texture of the buildings were the same, and then perhaps mimic the awning situation on both buildings. You're talking about a, a fabric or a metal type awning? These are sure metal awnings here. We'll do the same thing on the beach. And we can put the metal awnings above well, I'm a, the I'm windows a, over there. 
kind of cost do you think you're looking at there, Mr. Cole? Well, it would be substantially less. I mean, I can, you know, you're looking at a residential window I know what. versus a commercial one. Mm -hmm. Already crazy expensive for that store. Oh, I can guarantee you. And the, the renderings are, are gorgeous. I don't mind telling you. I love the way you've done the different textures on them. It look, really looks nice. Now, on building B, Mr. Cole, you have the, uh, looks like a banister there or something yes, in front of so that is like a little courtyard out of the back of that? Yeah. Yes, it's a balcony on the back. Balcony on the back. Oh, okay. So those, those folks right. back will be looking down on the court street. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm a little concerned about filling up both buildings with commercial when you already have about a dozen commercial properties That's why. that are empty in, in Raymonton. You know, obviously, I think there's more of a need for residential property in Raymonton with the college kids are concerned. But, you know, I, I kind of have that symmetrical thing going on, too, where I would like both the buildings to to favor. Um, and because these buildings are going to be right on Gordon Street and looking at the I mean, I wouldn't, you know, I, I don't know that I'd want to live in a building right there on the first floor where my living room, you know, is from here to the wall, you know. Um, you get a class quick. Yeah. Oh, you could, yeah. You also might get lots of visitors. So it's just a suggestion. I mean, obviously that's your that's your forte. I mean, you could figure out how to make that work. But I feel like the buildings should, since they're right there on Rampant and you know downtown Rampant, they ought to be more. Um, I think they ought to be more similar. Well, basically, elevation A and B are identical with yeah. exception of awnings. Yeah. And I think we would. I think we would. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Cone while he's up here? Jimmy, I know you've I, I know you've addressed the traffic pattern and stuff that there was there was concerns last week. I see that already. Yes, sir. About the uh, interior. Yes, sir. Traffic yes, sir. You've addressed that. It looks really nice. All right. Okay. Mr. Cone, <coughs> anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this request come forward this time? I think I don't, 
We haven't, tonight was the first I've heard about maybe talking to the people um, across, the street, across the street and I have, or maybe I hope we can work something out. But um, just wanted to kind of make it a point to let you understand. I think we did get some calculations on the uh, Jimmy staff leaves Friday at lunch, or, you know, so he had to get this into the city of Riverton by, by the end of third of his business, actually. So he didn't really have time, and, and I kind of misquoted the count of the units. What we're really looking for is the bed count, because the, the actual, that's how Riverton is, is doing their parking. That's how the city does their parking, I believe, or the county one. And uh, so, but if you, were, if you were using the city's requirements, or the county's requirements, or the river's requirements, and you take out the commercial space, we, we're fine with the park. Um, but again, if, when it comes down to, if you can get this approved, we can go go forward with the civil engineering and and see exactly what we can and what we can't do. I'm sorry, I understand. But you know, how many units were downstairs on building B? You know, it would be uh, in units. And how many beds is that? It, it, it well, really, worst case, I'm just curious. Well, worst case scenario, uh, 30. 30 beds. It's not really that many beds. It's probably so so I'm just saying, right now, it, per Jessica, just a while ago, she says she needed 286. Mm -hmm. She needed 286 bed, uh, park place for bedrooms. So in the worst case, you need 306, and you, you got that now. There you, there. There, there you go. You got that now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so one of some other issues, um, <coughs> as far as the storefront glass, you know, it's we have to meet egress with the on in the windows and in the construction of the apartments, and so with by in order for us to do the storefront glass, you know, the, the retail on the front of a building, we're going to have to really soup it up, put you know, storefront glass four to eight foot up with doors, and to mimic that on the building would still be egress. You can't just do photo windows. You, you have to be egress, but they have to be operable. Or at least a portion of them have to be operable. And it, it's just, it would be nearly impossible. But like I was telling Ms. Ms. Jessica here, uh, from standing back in that parking lot looking at the building, these buildings are going to be so big, you're, unless somebody points it out to you, you can probably sit there and stare at it and not realize what the difference was. So, you know, what, but again, once we get all of our engineering, but not all of it done, but at least the retention part done where we can see how many parking spaces we can fit on the site. At that point, we would like to say, okay, this is, we're going to have this many, this many uh, bedrooms. And so we just would like to, at that time, we'll have to engage the architect again and, and nail down exactly how many one bedrooms we're going to have, and how many two bedrooms, and how many three bedrooms we're going to have. You see what I'm saying? So, but we don't want to be hindered, if you will, with the commercial parking requirements when it comes time to do that. If the, if the engineer comes back and says, well, we can get you 295 spaces, you know, we don't want the first 56 or 70 or whatever the requirement would be for the commercial space. We don't want the first 70 spaces to go for a commercial space that we don't want in the first place. So in a perfect world, in a perfect world, then you'd like to see the commercial space that I like with. We're, we're wanting to, we want to fit in with the city, and, and you know, when, when I first, I think in the city or the county, they call it first step meeting, I forget what the city of Burlington calls it, but we had a meeting with me and the architect and Jessica, and you know, uh, you know, we do, we do apartments, and, and that's what we would like to do, but we, it was stressed to us that it's a it's the last property in Remington. It's the old Remington site. There's a historic um, a smoke site there that we would like to have no problem, you know. We would, if it's going to be the city, we'd like to get it cleaned up because the vines growing up and so we can have a mortar bed and we don't need it falling on us. You know, but but um, as far as, uh, you know, forget your question here about that. In a perfect world, you'd like to see the commercial space done away with. Yeah, but I mean, the city, the city wants it, so we were willing to to do it, you know, uh, to make them happy. But 
Mr. Hand, if, if, we, if we say we do away, like Mr. Cohen stated, if we could do away storefront glass and maybe just put some type of awning to mimic the building B. The awning would be doable um, and it would be uh, feasible. I mean, the, the, replacing the storefront glass is possible for I, I, I think we need to leave the storefront yeah. glass. I think yeah. Jessica, you gave it that. Just put an awning to make them look like they mimic each other. Especially where those, um, where the outdoor patio, the balcony. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Right there. Yeah. yeah. I know Mr. Cohn can put the controller and put it in there and be beautiful. Yes, sir. So, you know, we just, you know. Okay, so. Just, just to go back over it and very quickly, um, I'm let you make it. Um, so, Jessica, how far away is this roadside parking? It's got to be close, isn't it? Very close. It's across the road, sir. Okay. 50 feet, 65 feet at the moment. Okay. And there's up and down so, Bay Street, up and down Bay Street Blaze. There's so that's, it's been still up for commercial air. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, necessarily, the parking places might not be that big an issue. Correct, yes, sir. And also, I would say that these Typical retail commercial spaces, very effective. You know, some of them may stay. We may have a restaurant that's there up until 9 p.m., but a lot of those spaces are going to leave at 5 o'clock. The students are at college all day and then they come on. Typically, you know, they should, they should, you know, they should share some of those spaces. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing was um, to give you relief, not doing the second building. If you kind of mimic it, Mr. Cohn said he could do it just by simply putting an awning on there to mimic it. Jessica, you're okay with that? Yes, sir. And she was okay with setbacks. I think we've got it all taken care of. They've got to take care of it. Just the one thing, again, I don't know how, how she would even ask or address it or, or what, but it is. Whenever, whenever, we're, whenever we're, when we do our engineering, we say, okay, we can have this many spaces. You know, I don't know how Jessica or, or how how we come back? I mean, we don't want to have to come back no more. So, in other words, how do we how can we address that issue as far as okay, we're going to have this front of the egg building with commercial space. Can we just can we, in other words, can we just do away with the commercial requirement? Well, I, that would be the city of Rangeland and wouldn't make that final determination on that. I would think unless. Because that, that that goes through their engineering department. Is that correct? I mean, Matt, I don't know about the city, but for the county parking requirements, if you commit to do 286 spaces, as long as you do 286, you're you're fine. It's right. just when you don't go below that. But if you go over that, that's that's not an issue. That's normally how the county would do it. Well, so you set a minimum, but if you go over that, great. Where he's struggling at right now, and he has uh, in this present drawing, way he's got 249 bedrooms. He has 286 parking places, mm -hmm. but then when Jessica wants to throw the 70 or commercial in on, mm -hmm. he don't have enough. He's right. 35 short. So we're just trying to get him some relief and say if, if, if we can get relief from commercial mm -hmm. on-site on road parking, that's what we're trying to do. I mean, it, right now for the county or the city, the ZBOA typically has authority over relief. Riverton doesn't have the ZBOA, so I think it's all vested in the council. So mm -hmm. I'm good. As long as it's kind of like the PD side plan, but as long as the council approves it, if you go over super, but you just don't go beneath it. So I think it makes that minimum number super important for us. That's how the county or the city. We have to go over, but my point is that if we, if we can't, this is a, uh, an expensive tract of land. Right, so you're, 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 just, you're just want to relate from the commercial yeah. side. On the commercial side, yeah, I do. We, and we're willing to do, if we have to, the 14,000 square feet. But uh, we would like some relief on the parking issue on that. Right. So, 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 so that's why I was getting to a while ago. If, if we asked what that, Mr. Cole, I mean, I mean, first of all, where we were, and the, in the, if I just did worst case thirty, yeah. that's three hundred and sixteen parking places, uh -huh. and you're two eighty six right now. So that's where that's if Jessica keeps some relief, either curbside parking, if you will, or roadside parking. That's I was trying to. Get her to say. And if you could also go ahead and enter into some kind of <coughs> agreement with the uh, parking space or the, across a, the street, no you know, then that, yeah, it, it's a no brainer. That'll give you your backup if needed. I mean, there's always additional parking. I mean, there's tons of parking in that parking area. Mm -hmm. so. But then I think we make it work. Yeah. Okay, anyone else here wish to speak in favor? We've allowed our 10 minute bud. Anyone else? Anybody else wants to speak? Anyone else like to speak in favor? Okay, anyone wants to speak again? Opposition to this request, come forward. Anyone wishes to speak in opposition? 
There being none, commissioners, any uh, discussion on this? Mr. Willis, you got your motion ready? No. What? <laughs> okay, I will take a motion this time on this request. I'm in favor, I just don't know what y'all are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Well, do you want to do away with some of the conditions that staff has asked for? We want the first one for sure. Well, she wants to increase the commercial vote. We need to do away with condition number one. Okay. And then I think it needs to be stated in there that, that the staff and the contractors agreed upon uh, some marketplace negotiation and, uh, the, and the setback. The marketplace, because you, she already agreed to uh, not do the commercial on building B. Right. You got that down? Okay. Are you ready? I'm going to try. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to make a motion that we accept RE 2017-01 with the following conditions. We are going to um, grant the easement um, to the City of Rumerton to allow access to the smokestack. We're going to increase the city's right of way to include on-street parking. We're going to increase the size of the recreational facilities. The approval of the site plan um, as, a, as submitted um, and that they meet the requirements of the zoning um, ordinance. We are going to recommend an additional condition that the staff and contractors can agree on parking conditions. Mm -hmm. Um, and I believe that is here. Step back. And that you'll you'll attach that. Just make sure building B has an exterior facade. That was the additional one. That yeah. building B has the facade, the additional facade to mimic building A. To some capacity, to some extent. Mr. Tillman. I'm sorry. There's one thing I meant to address. Mr. Tillman, you got the box up. <laughs> The easement to the smokestack, yes. it's already established on the, uh, there's a 10 foot easement on the property line that runs by the railroad track and it comes off the bakery track. So that's parcel. already been done? It's already in place. It's, it's a temporary it's easement. It's a temporary, yeah. okay. but it will be converted to a permanent okay. easement. So I just want to make sure. That, that's, just, that's, that's just what she put in condition. That was a right. condition that you'll have to right. 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 convert it to a permanent. Okay. Right. okay. Yeah. All right. Do I have a second? I'll second it. I'm the one who gives it. I got it. That was motion and second. Any discussion on the motion, Commissioner Willis? There being none, all in favor say five raise the right hand. And believe it or not, that's unanimously approved. 6-0. It has been a wonderful evening. I'm glad everybody.